So COBRA meeting this morning, chaired by David Cameron. What should David Cameron do then about the threat from the self-styled Islamic State? Joining us from our Westminster studios, Lord West, who used to be the first Sea Lord and the Minister for Security and Counterterrorism as well, and Howard Wielden, an independent defence analyst. Gentlemen, a very good morning to, to you both. Uh, Lord West, if I can start with you, uh, let's just pick up on the whole question of strategy. Uh, it's been quite notable, hasn't it, in terms of what's coming out of Washington. Uh, the Americans have been candid. Obama's been candid about giving this impression of how they are making and still thinking about their way of dealing strategically with the threat posed by Islamic State? Yes, I mean, I think that's very clear, and I think it's unfortunate. And I hope that at the NATO summit, maybe um, the president might be a bit clearer in what the Americans are intending to do. But I, I think I've got a couple of things to say straight away. The, I don't like this organization of terrorists being called the Islamic State. It's not a state. So I still call it ISIS or ISIL. And I think calling it Islamic State gives it more credibility than they deserve. And I think the other thing is that although a year ago, almost uh, a week, a year and a week ago, uh, in the House, we decided not to go and bomb Syria, which I think was the right decision. Syria and Assad had no intention to kill British people or attack Britain. The ISIS organization is, in, is harming and attacking British citizens, and it does intend to damage Britain, because some of their people have said that. That, that is a completely different ballgame. That means everything is back on the table. Um, and therefore, I think uh, whether one uses force, how one uses it, everything is now back in the game because I, I'm a great believer if a country tries to, or if someone tries to attack you or damage our people, then they jolly well get what they deserve. Yeah, I, certainly when I remember, I always try and call them self styled Islamic State, but we can debate that point another time. Howard Wilden, very briefly, because we're expecting to hear from the Foreign Secretary very shortly indeed. There is the danger, and Lord West makes this point, there's always the danger that you start with very limited military aims, but our old friend Mission Creep. Uh, starts to assert itself. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. But I don't think this will be the case here. I think we will go for a cons very considered response. It's the first thing on the agenda of the uh, NATO summit, which, which begins tomorrow. We need, in the end, a political uh, response. And to get there, we must work through a process of assisting the Kurds, of supplying them with whatever we can uh, that, that falls short of a full re military response. So we've got to be careful. We've got to work together. The alliance, I think, will, uh, will come up with some very interesting uh, points on this tomorrow. So I'm very much for, for, for requiring a degree of patience here uh, and so that we do end up with a, con uh, a considered response backing uh, what the Americans Howard are Howard Wilden, I'll interrupt very briefly. Well. Here's the Foreign Secretary. Well, the US President will be making uh, an announcement shortly on the basis of US analysis, but our prelimin preliminary analysis is that this uh, video is genuine, uh, that it is Mr. Sotloff, uh, and that it appears to be uh, the same uh, person with an apparently British voice that, that appeared in the last video. Obviously, our uh, thoughts are with the family and friends of Mr. Sotloff. We're doing everything we can to reassure the family of the British hostage who was shown in the video. You are now talking publicly about the British hostage, but have known about, about him for some time. Therefore, what's happened in the last 24 hours, does that change the mindset of the British government in terms of your overall strategy in, in dealing with IS? It can't allow us to change our overall strategy. We've been aware uh, of this uh, hostage, of course, um, for some time, but we have to deal with IS on the basis of the wider threat that they pay... Uh, that they pose to the British public uh, as well as to this individual. In practical terms, what can you do in terms of attempting to extricate this British hostage from this situation? There must be a limited amount in reality that you can do. Well, you're aware, of course, um, of the rescue attempt that took place some time ago, uh, un unfortunately unsuccessfully. Um, you wouldn't expect me to discuss uh, the various options that we will be considering, but I can assure you that we will look at every possible option to protect this person. Do the events of the last 24 hours mean that British airstrikes are any closer? Uh, it doesn't make any uh, difference at all to our strategic planning. As the Prime Minister said, uh, we will look very carefully at the options available to us to support the legitimate government of Iraq and Kurdistan in defending themselves against the threat um, from ISIL. And uh, if we judge that airstrikes could be uh, beneficial, could be the best way to do that, then we will certainly consider them. But we've made no decision uh, to do so at the moment. Are there further COBRA meetings planned for later today, for tomorrow? Can you give us any more insight about what was discussed around the table this morning? 
uh, well, we don't talk about what we discuss at COBRA meetings, and we'll have uh, COBRA meetings whenever there is any development that it's necessary to discuss. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you, Foreign Secretary. Thanks. Foreign Secretary there after the COBRA meeting being pressed on the question of how Britain ought to respond to the fact that there are these threats now uh, made against a British hostage held by self-styled Islamic State. Let's put some of those thoughts to uh, Lord West. Lord West, Foreign Secretary making it clear he could do no other in a sense that British strategy will in no way be informed or developed by the tragic case of one particular individual and sad to say that's the way it has to be. Absolutely right. And, of course, we don't pay ransom for hostages. And the fact that there are barbaric acts against our, our people uh, and British citizens um, shouldn't influence overall strategy. But as I said, if uh, a group decide to start killing British citizens, and if that group also threatens our nation, it means we're in a very different game from intervening, for example, as in the case of Syria, where Assad was never intending to do that to British citizens and things. Therefore, it was a slightly different case. And what we must now do is look... Uh, on the diplomatic level, we've got to look very hard at money flows. We need even better intelligence of the region. We've got to look how we can fit in with allies. We've got to put pressure on people like Qatar and uh, Saudi Arabia. A coordinated program of how we can squash this barbaric group of people who are behaving beyond the norms of normal human behavior. And we need to absolutely put that pressure on them. And it's quite right. No knee-jerk reactions. We shouldn't do no. that. I think, I think I would like to say that the barbaric killing and execution of this man... That the people who've done it, we will find out who they are. I would like to see them going through the courts in The Hague, but actually I'm afraid there are some people in the world, effectively they'll become dead men walking. I have no doubt whatsoever that the Americans will get them. I would like to see them going through courts, but you know, we will find out exactly who they are and they want to be aware of that. Lord West, just before I go back to Howard Wilden, I just want to uh, press you for any ministerial experience you've got of dealing with hostage situations like this, because I'm guessing that from, from a ministerial point of view, there can be very few things around the cabinet table for ministers and secretaries of state to grapple with because a decision can, is the difference between a life and a death. It, it is extremely difficult and very heartrending at times but we have a very clear policy on this. Um, I'm afraid some other countries don't and these groups of people, I'm afraid these, these, these uh, bandits, I'll call them for want of a better word, they see this as a way of making lots of money. Although they've executed these and said this is because of American attacks, actually they see taking hostages as a way of making lots of money. When people pay ransoms, sometimes very big ransoms, all it does is helps them get more weapons, communications gear and encourages them to take further hostages. Uh, it's a barbaric way of behaviour uh, and they need to be squashed. Uh, Lord West and Howard Wilden, thanks both very much indeed for your thoughts uh, this morning. We've been listening to Philip Hammond, the Foreign Secretary, referring specifically to that abortive American attempt to free not just American, but British hostages as well. Let's recap what he had to say. Well, you're aware, of course, um, of the rescue attempt that took place some time ago, uh, un unfortunately unsuccessfully. Um, you wouldn't expect me to discuss uh, the various options that we will be considering, but I can assure you that we will look at every possible option to protect this person.